I'm going to talk about how we're never going to win against the elites because they're ahead of everybody and they have so much influence and power, let alone money. Like, you don't even have to bring up money. Just the influence itself is enough to prove that they don't really need money, but they control it the most. But what's more powerful than their money is their influence and it's their connections, which is a form of absolute power. So... Um, George Soros has never had a good reputation. And especially if you ask any Hungarians, um, they'll tell you. Um, he's always been, by even Hungarian people's standards, a piece of shit. And he's done some, you know, Nazi shit. He's done some, uh, things that I can't really talk about, but they're not good. And so... It just shows you that if, if this guy has been able to get away with the stuff that he's gotten away with, I mean, what else do you need? What more information do you need? I mean, it's there. You know, the information is out there. Um, I know he doesn't have a good reputation with most people. Most people don't like him. And he's been known to fund, uh, to fund you know, radical organizations like BLM, uh, woke, woke to his wokists, you know, and even feminists. Um, so it shows you that at the end of the day, you know, these elites are all about themselves and their family unit branches, which control the world. Now, um, you may ask, well, who's uh, George Soros' son? Well, his name is um, Alexander Soros. And he's basically going to be the replacement of George Soros. And George Soros left him behind. Uh, he uh, Alexander basically inherited $25 billion. $25 billion. Think about that. So these elites are very smart. They know how to play the game. They have parameters that protect them when they are in a sinking ship. So... What happens is they get back in, in those positions of power even once they're exposed or they're on, um, you know, on a sinking ship. That's my point. Their influence is more powerful than their money. I don't know how they get this influence. I just know that their influence has a major impact in their power. Okay. Um, we all know the World Econoc Economic Forum doesn't give a fuck about the common man. We're just the slaves and the sheeps. So all they're doing is enjoying their life. And they're doing it at the expense of, of the masses. And these are the same men that will throw you down the drain because they don't care about you. So at the end of the day, it proves my point that the black pill is the dividing lines between men. I don't care how much you try to debunk that. It's not debunkable. Men are always going to be at competition. We may not be at war. We may not be in direct or direct confrontation, but we're always going to be our each other's competition, okay? So one man of one nation is not going to care about your man and your nation. You have to care about your own man and your own nation, and I'm sure that if you got to the same power level of power that he did, you would be no different from him, because the whole, it's a whole new different world when you get to the, the, to the pinnacles of power of, of their, of their heights, so uh, at the end of the day, you know, elitism is always going to be immortal. There's always going to be a set of group of people that have the most influence, the most power, the most money that will control the societies. And there's nothing you can do. That's a black pill. Red pillars would be like, well, I'm just walking away. But I mean, who are you walking away from? You know that you're aware of it. And most pill red pillars, from what I see, they're still wage slave maxing. They're still working these dead end jobs, making ends meet, just to money max, which all you're really doing is producing more money for the elites. That's why I've never worked a full time job. And when I did, I was miserable as hell. I despised it. I hated it. And corporatism is is it's even more. It's becoming even more elitist. I see it every day now in my part time job. So it's it's the common man, guys like us, average to below average males. We don't mean anything. We only we only mean money. We only mean numbers to these people. We're not humans to them. So 
this is why I've always said, if you can afford really being MGTOW, by all means, that's the right way to go. Really. But most of us can't even afford actually being a real MGTOW, let alone being a monk. So at the end of the day, you know, elites are always going to win. And one thing that elites are always going to promote is feminism. They're always going to promote feminism because feminism is another branch of power to them. They can they have all the power in the world, all the money in the world, all the influence in the world to get whatever woman they want. And even when they do get like uh, ostracized and they're in that once again, that sinking ship, they have parameters to avoid being held accountable to that. And they'll just buy their way out. And that's what they do with feminists. And feminists actually have a lot of these male elitists by the balls as well, because some of them, what they end up doing is they end up sleeping what some of these barely legal age women, if you catch my drift or, or lower, and then they're like, okay, they get blackmailed. That's why they keep promoting feminism because feminism is a lot. Those, those these powerful feminist elitists like Catherine McKinnon, Linda Gordon, and all the other ones, like I can't remember the other two names. They, they have a lot of influence themselves against these guys. They have a lot of shit to say. Like when you talk about the, you know, that one guy that hung himself, he has the list. The government has the list, but they're not going to tell you. The Epstein list, oh, they know who's in there. So <laughs> you got to be careful when you talk about this stuff. But I mean, I'm a nobody. What the hell do they want from guys like us? They don't, they don't care about us. We don't exist to them. So at the end of the day, it's always going to be men who are elitists. They're going to be your main enemies. They can be the same race as you and they won't give a fuck about you because you, what? Sometimes it doesn't even come to race. It comes down to power. It comes down to classism. You're a bottom feeder. You're a lower class, you know, cast male. So you don't mean anything. All you're supposed to do is be expendable and disposable. That's it. That's the way they view you. And they use feminism to their advantage and they promote feminism over the common man. Even if you're good looking, that don't mean shit. This is about influence and power. That's it. Influence and power. And anytime they need to get out of a sinking ship, they'll always use money. Because money is another form of power. And women love money more than anything. So at the end of the day, you have to realize that th these people are never going to die. They're never going to go away. If you... Remove them from the from the current world, or there's like a World War Four or Five. There's always going to be a group, a hierarchy. That's the black pill. There's always going to be a hierarchy, and 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 human nature. There's always going to be a hierarchy in societies, where one said group of people have the most influence. They have the most power, and they will throw you down the shitter, because you don't reach the heights level of heights of power that they do and even if you do you're just going to become corrupt like they do they'll they'll convince you to go their way which is the dark side right kind of like star wars you got the the jedi order and then you got the sith order they're both ordered but one is good and one is bad so we know who these bad people are and and it's, it's insanity to me that they claim to be moral and this and that and the other and and they fund a lot of the the our enemies like the wokes the lgbtq plus people the rainbow people because it's in line with their agenda so the heterosexuals are being wiped out they're not reproducing and they control your women to reproduce with other men just to keep the human species going they know about the race pill they know how it interacts with women. They know about female nature. They know about hypergamy. They know about genetic determinism. They know about all this shit. They collect data and information from all of us, even these videos. And they study us and they're like, okay, now we know how to go about this. This is why I'm always going to say the black pill will always win. But the black pill is not, a, it's not to make you depressed. It's to show you that there's always going to be fucked up shit no matter what. So is there any point to even you know exist anymore is there a point to even live i mean when you're gonna when you're not gonna live your 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 best i mean you can only live your happiest 
But this is why I say there's no unity in, in men. There isn't. Even if in, in past histories, men have known to work with one another, even if they were of a different nationality, because they wanted peace. These men right here, they may claim that they want peace, but they don't want peace. They want power. And the women are no different. The women sometimes are much more worse because they're the ones that help these elitist men. And they also screw the common man over by passing more gynocentric, feminist, gynocratic policies. And people still can't figure out why there's a manosphere.